let's go out 35 years. We won't use any current assets. Yes, let's use, I don't know, $90,000 of combined income. Um, okay, so if we've got somebody that's a, a family making, say, a combined income of $90,000 a year, over 35 years, that's $3.1 million. That's a hard number to, to realize. Yet, that's the amount of money that would pass through this family's hands over this 35-year time frame. Would we be happy if everything was going up by 4% a year and we had gotten to the point where we were spending every bit of what this is, everything else is going up, it's going to make it awfully hard to continue to eat. So we would expect that our income has to go up at least by 4% a year, correct? And if we do that at 4%, just to keep up with inflation, that's six and a half million dollars. We take our ability to have to, to work for granted, and the reality is that is one of our greatest and best assets that we have. So we take this over this time frame, six point six million dollars, and that last year's income is three hundred and forty one thousand dollars and this is what is so amazing about inflation we can look back and see that this has happened to families from the past when we look out in the future and look at ninety thousand dollars of income equals three hundred and forty one thousand thirty five years is three hundred and forty one thousand going to be any more than ninety thousand is if inflation's four percent no and rea and and even more importantly because of the way our tax brackets are, sh are structured is 341000 after tax going to buy as much as $90,000 does today? So that's not even going to keep up. And yet that's $6.6 .6 million passing through their hands over this time frame. Now I want to get kind of ridiculous. And let's just assume, I guess we had a government job. Everything was paid for, right? <laughs> Food, housing, everything. Okay, if we didn't have any expenses, could we save and invest all this money? All right, and if we did that at 5%, we end up with $15 million as a maximum potential. Now, clearly we do have expenses. We can't do that. So if we look at this and we look at total taxes, and let's use, I don't know, by total taxes, I mean, we have federal income tax. Here we don't have state tax. A lot of places have local tax, sales tax, cell phone tax, hotel tax, gasoline tax, and thanks to your buddy Al Gore, breathing tax pretty soon, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so if we look at 35%, then what we see is that we pay out $2.3 million, $2 million in taxes, but it impacts us in the long run by taking away over $5 million worth of future assets. Why is that? Anybody? Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and when do they start eroding wealth? It's way back here, isn't it? We don't, we don't get to take the taxes off of the end. Unfortunately, every dollar that comes out quits earning for the rest of the time frame. So while we only wrote checks for $2.3 million, like that's not enough, um, <laughs> it took $5 million away from us. So the impact of taxation is horrible. What about debt service? What's Nelson's number? Statistics show that 34.5% of the average American's income goes towards servicing debt. And if we use that number at 34.5%, we see another $2.3 million going out in debt service, which, again, takes another $5.1 million away from our future assets. And then we look at lifestyle. And let's put lifestyle in here at 28%, or 285 there's another million eight. You know what's interesting about that is <laughs> that's the smallest piece of the whole thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty sad. $1.8 million, which results in $4.2 million in loss in the future. And we end up with a whopping $296,000 in savings, which is about three quarters of one year's income. That's a very close to the amount that they're saying they have. That's all they have. It is. So they've lived the 
his life, he had just... Absolutely. And they were told somewhere back here that if they just put a dollar a week away, everything is going to be great because these numbers were huge. But think about what was happening back here. Somebody was making an equivalent of $20,000, which equals $90,000. And to that, you know, $296,000 seemed like a lot of money. Okay. Now then, when we go forward, it's three quarters of a year's income. So what do the financial institutions say that, we need to do to solve this problem. Take on risk, right? Because risk automatically means we're going to have more money. <laughs> you know, everybody looks at risk as one of those deals where we're going to, you know, we're going to hit it out of the park. The best definition of risk is the likelihood of loss. That's what risk means. It's not the, li the likelihood you're going to hit one out of the park. It's your likelihood of, of total loss. So the thought process here is <laughs> I need to take on more likelihood of total loss so I can have more money. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that really what we're buying? And yet they do it all day long. So let's look at this. Let's just... Um, humor them for a minute. If if we earn 10% every year instead of 5, would that be a pretty risky, uh, a pretty high rate of return? Because that's got to be net of fees. And if we're talking about market fees, we're looking at probably having to earn at least 14% in order to get 10 even before tax. Let's see what 10% does on our returns instead of 5. Wow. That moves us up to um, a little over two years of income. Didn't quite solve the problem, didn't it? Did it? And yet we took, we had to earn 14 or 15 percent every single year with no down years for 35 years straight to make that happen. That doesn't solve the problem because here's the problem. Problem is, if I earn 100 percent and I put nothing in it, how much do I have down the road? <laughs> What's that? Exactly. And that's where the problem is. But who wants to reduce lifestyle to make this happen? <laughs> that's not much fun either, is it? What if we got to look at your information and found where we could trim off some of these tax dollars? Let's go back to 5%. What if we could trim some of those tax dollars, move some of your assets into some more tax advantaged areas, and potentially find some places that you're overpaying tax. Maybe we knock that from 35 down to 30 percent. That right there would have more impact than the 10 percent ever thought about having because now we're actually shifting some assets into the savings side. But what, more importantly, what if we took that money that we saved and we understood how debt works and we applied that against our debt And maybe it had the impact of over this time frame knocking that debt in half. We can't get rid of all of it today. But what if we went down to, say, 18%? Now we've got $3.5 million out there or 10 times our last year's income. Now we're actually making some headway. And hopefully we can do that without impacting our lifestyle terribly. Now, I think for a lot of us, we probably do need to impact our lifestyle a little bit. But... <laughs> but uh, you know, ideally, if we start to understand how money works and we start shifting dollars around, the biggest thing is we can't steal the peas. If we start, if we start saving money in these other places, that can't go to lifestyle. Okay, we've got to start applying it against our future. And if we can do that, we have a potential of actually fixing this thing. And but we need to understand that if I can earn ten percent. <laughs> like our mutual fund people say, and then back off. So, you know, it, it, with our mutual fund, you only need to put 50 cents a week away or whatever it is. If I could make more, why would I, why would I want to back off on the amount of money I'm putting into it? I mean, it's, it's really backwards. And what's more important, we just saw it right here, is it the amount of money we're saving or the interest rate we're earning on it? <laughs>